ready for Passover. Bobby's making chorosis in the kitchen. When I need some good kosher food, there's only three words I need to know. Feed me Bubby. for Passover. We've got to clean the shelves and clean the house and then that's the big step and then we start cooking and after the cooking what do you do the next final day? You have to get ready for the Seder. So what do you need for the Seder plate? Karosis. So I thought it would be a good idea to have my recipe for karosis. It's simple. I know there are so many variations it's unbelievable and they all use fruits, and they use apples, and they use wines. But mine is simple, and I've used it for all this time, and the children love it. So I thought, well, this would be a good beginning for Passover. My karosis. And uh, let's begin. I make my karosis with five simple ingredients. And I'll give you the measurements, but actually it doesn't have to be exact. Use your taste buds, and I think that'll help you better than ex everything else. I use shredded apples. I'll show you how I shred them, and walnuts, and cinnamon, sugar, or a little honey, and the uh, wine. And the wine, I like conquered wine, but if you don't have wine, any red wine will do. Oh, Avram, before I start, you want to tell them what, why we have chorosis? Bobby, I'm, I'm behind the camera right now. But Avram, people are going to know what, what, what does it mean, what is it for? It's for the Santa plate, that they know, but a little history. I mean, come here, you can, you're better at this than I am with the history. Avram, no? Please, I need, you can tell the history better than I can. Come over here. All right, one moment. No, Avram, come over here. All right. I'm here, I'm here. So, the story of Charosa, that's what you want me to tell them, right? And sure, you can do a better job than I can. All right. Make it simple, not too long. Easy to understand and simple, okay? Okay, here it is. The story of Charoset is all about when the Jewish people happened to be in the land of Egypt and they were slaves. So there was a decree from the Pharaoh and it stated that the Jewish men that were born were to be thrown into the river. So what happened was is the women ended up secretly giving birth under trees, and it's believed that it was apples, which is why apples is used in Charoset. But the also, the other point that the rabbis were discussing is that the fact that the Israelites were out there making pyramids with bricks and mortar. And when you think about mortar, mortar is thick. So the thickness of the mortar and also the apples combined together gives you the charoset. And that's the story of charoset. All right, now Abram, you can go behind the camera and let me begin to make charoset. You got it, Bubby. <clears throat> let me show you how I peel my apple in order to get the, the most apple out of it. Peel my apple first and then with the point of my knife take out the core which is 
not too difficult to do. And that way, when you grate the apple on the large grater, it comes, I use practically all the apple, and just a little bit is left. I like to use the, the wide slots on the apple and grate it because I think it gives it a better flavor than to really um, do it in a processor or to do it the fine. I think it gives it a little better flavor. I like to use walnuts that are generally in the shell because uh, this way I buy them by the bulk and they stay in the refrigerator drawer. And when I need them, I have them. And not only that, but Zane likes walnuts for snack. So it's, he likes to break, uh, crack them, open them. But a lot of times if you're in a hurry, you buy the packaged pre-cut and either the fine would be good or you want the chopped. Uh, it's a matter of taste. If you want a little chopped, it, that makes the horosis a little more crunchy. And if you want it fine, well, it makes it like anything else a little more finer. And today, these the nuts I have are crushed. So, But I still would like them a little more crushed. So this is what I do either with the whole walnuts or with the crushed ones. Put them in the plastic bag. And an easy way. Instead of a processor, I have a hand processor. What's a hand processor? My can. I take a can, put a little pressure on, and it gives it just the right consistency that I need. Very simple. Use what you have. Don't buy an awful lot of gadgets. Make use of what you have in, in your drawer. And I'm sure everybody has something to improvise. Okay, I think that's a good consistency. And that's all done. And now we have to put everything together, the apples, the walnuts, the wine, and I'll show you how I put them all together. Bobby, guess what time it is? It's time for the word of the day, the Yiddish word of the day. Actually, it's not. It's time for Ask Bobby. Okay, Bubby, our first Ask Bubby comes from Leah from Framingham, who asks, what is the perfect meal for a day that you are snowed in? Oh, I can tell you about that very easily. We had a blizzard, and we were caught on, I, you know, it was one of these things where I didn't have a chance to go shopping. We ended up with a couple of rolls and three frankfurts. Now, how am I going to split it? What did I do? I went and I took the hot dog, the frankfurts, and sliced them, and put them in the rolls, and they became hot dog sandwiches. And you know something? They were delicious. And now I make them even, instead of putting in the hot dog rolls, they go into a bulky roll, sliced with mustard and relish, and the children enjoyed it even better, because, you know, the juices of the hot dog went right into the roll. It was delicious. And we call that our Storm Hot Dogs. I like calling them Hot Dog and a Half Sandwiches. That, yeah, that, that's a better name. In fact, that's the name that we have in our cookbook. I believe it is. Yeah. I yeah. believe it is. Ready for the next question? Yes. All right, this next question comes from Sarah from Chicago, and she asks, Bubby, what is the most romantic meal to cook, and what's the ro most romantic meal that you've ever eaten? Oi, well, what, where, what I've eaten was when we went to the Hotel Concord in the Catskills, and really we had a delicious gourmet meal. There was the rib roast and all the other things that were going with. That was delicious. But there's another romantic meal. What? It worked. What? I, my first meal that I made from, for Zadie. Oh, what was that? Oh, you know something? I have to start thinking what, what oh, I remember now. Huh. <laughs> I had... My, after all, you know, I was a single girl and not the greatest cook, and how often did I practice? Wait, Bubby, you weren't the greatest cook? Now, experience. Well, that's Now tough. I can help out all the young people because they've got, a, they've got the recipes and the measurements. And, but when I did, I, my mother didn't measure, so I had to figure out what my mother put in this. 
and there was no measure. It was a little bit of that, a handful of that. It came out delicious, but I couldn't do it that way. Huh. So now, it's, that's why everything is more successful and easier. It's measured. So what is that meal that I you had, end up serving Zadie? I had some chicken soup made, but I didn't have enough. So I cut up some of the chicken, and I added vegetables, and you know something? It came out, it was delicious. Oh, wow. And that, so what am I going to make for the entree? I want to show him that I can cook traditional as well as up-to-date meals. So I made sweet and sour meatballs. They were easy. Of course you did. Over, I had it over white rice. You know something? That sold him. Because he asked me to marry him. And after so many years, Zadie and I together. And you know, I still make the same thing and he still loves it. So you never know. Sometimes the gourmet is good. And sometimes plain, ordinary, traditional meals hit the spot. See, I like the train, the train, the plain, ordinary meals. That's, that's what I enjoy personally myself. Yeah, you know something? It's easier and you don't have to worry so much, especially with a single girl and can you want to please and some and you want and you want to outdo yourself, but sometimes outdoing is not as good as having something that is every but you have to try my sweet and sour meatballs. They are delicious over rice and my chicken soup. Well, I'll tell you, I don't think anyone can top it. You have to try it. Well, Bubby, are you ready for the next Ask Bubby question? What, what is it? I, I can't figure out what, what you've got. Another question? Of course, oh, got another. No, actually, it's now time for the Yiddish word of the day. Bubby, before you actually give today's Yiddish word, we have a special request. Is it okay if I read that? Yeah, I'm interested. Tell me about it. Okay, well, this special request comes from Laura and Joshua from Rhode Island. They would love to know the Yiddish word for brother and sister. You see, the son Joshua came up with that word. He's 10 years old and loves your show. He's homesick today with bronchitis. And thank you for all you do. Many blessings to you, Bubby. Oh, you know something? I have so many young audiences, and they're my favorite. And some of them, really, it's hard to believe, have been developed to make good cooks. They know their tastes. And I value their opinions more than I sometimes do the older ones. And so I'll have to give them the answer. The answer is very simple. Schwester is sister, and Bruder is brother. Schwester and Bruder. Sister and brother. I guess we have Yiddish words of the day today. But you know what? Because we have such a young fan, we'll, we'll make an exception. I think so. And I hope he feels much better. Well, if you would like to contact Bubby, feel free to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, or call us using the number below. We do our best to go and to contact everyone via email. But you know what? There are so many audience members that, that want to reach out to Bubby, and we are doing the best we can. So thank you, everyone, for your patience as we try to contact everyone. Thank you all so much. I'll try my best. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Bubby from Feed Me Bubby Video. And I have a new book out that is made of recipes and stories. It's delightful reading as well as recipes. And I'm sure you'll all enjoy it. It's available at Amazon, it's available at Barnes & Noble, and other book places where I'm sure you can order it. I hope you'll look it over. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Avram here from Feed Me Bubby. I'm actually walking in a Barnes & Noble bookstore right now, this very moment. As you can see, it actually even says, right over here, I don't know if you can kind of see that, Barnes & Noble. Anyway, I'm going to go and check to see. I heard that the book is actually on the shelf, and here we are in the cookbook section and as you can see right over here there it is so feel free come on down Barnes & Noble check it out pick up your book today I'm ready to mix all my ingredients together my shredded apples and my walnuts that I crushed 
and the cinnamon and the sugar and the wine to blend this and mix everything together. And with a spoon, gently mix it together so that everything is covered and mixed thoroughly. And then when it's mixed thoroughly, I, by the way, I like to make this several hours ahead of time because the flavors all blend, the wine and the nuts and the cinnamon. And the more, longer it stays, the better flavor it has. But it has to make sure it's refrigerated and you have it all ready for the Seder place. And here is my harosis, all ready for the Seder plate. Make sure you refrigerate it until you need it for the Seder plate. And all ready for your friends and family. I wish you all a healthy and happy Passover. Es gesundheit. Hi, Bubby. My name is Barbara. I live in Lawndale, California. I just wanted to tell you I got your cookbook and I love it. The stories are so interesting. I sat down and read it like a book. I uh, made the apple cake three times already. My granddaughter loves it. And uh, I really enjoy your show and your cookbook is really... I've had 50 cookbooks at least in my life and I've, I'm lucky if I've even read it once or twice to get one recipe out of them. But uh, thank you very much, Bubby. I really enjoy everything you do.